Ah, hello World Wide Web, I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And I've covered all kinds of horror icons on this channel, but strangely enough, I have never delved in this particular classic long-running horror franchise. Leprechaun starring Warwick Davies as, well, the Leprechaun. Interestingly enough, that's because he was looking to branch out with his roles and stretch his acting legs. Being cast as heroes and reliable, friendly faces for most of his career, this was a chance to show he could also make quite a memorable villain. Though arguably the big reason this movie took off is because it's the big screen debut of Jennifer Aniston, whose career kind of took off after this, which caused people to kind of go back and see exactly what this was all about. No surprises here, Leprechaun is about an evil leprechaun. His pot of gold was stolen, and he intends to get it back by any means necessary. Those means generally leaning towards murdering everyone around him. Another one of those plots that might not have worked out so well had the movie Monster had any social skills, but nevertheless, let's take a look at Leprechaun and try to keep it short. We open up to a Leprechaun! That didn't take long. Gotta establish he exists, is very evil, and has that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Try as they will, and try as they might. Who steals me gold? Won't live through the night. And as we have learned through horror franchises, you can only do that when the body count rises. So let's introduce some fresh bodies. Mr. O'Grady, played by Shay Duffin, and his wife, played by Pamela Mant. He's an Irish immigrant living in America, fresh back from a trip to Ireland, where, surprise! A pot of gold! A wee person, a leprechaun! I caught him! and made him show me where his gold is. Well, that doesn't make it sound any better. You mean your drunken ass was hobbling around Ireland, shaking down every short person you came across, demanding their money? It's the rule, you know. Just take his word on that one. Like many supernatural horror creatures, there are many little rules around this weird little guy. Mrs. O'Grady doesn't trust his tales of tiny treasure troves, but begins to brew some tea while he hides his hoard. But then, strange noises come from his suitcase, singing. Nursery rhymes, but also... I can't breathe. Please open the suitcase. Okay, fuck the gold. How in the hell did he manage to get that through customs? Because it was actually the Leprechaun! And, uh, you know, magic and shit. I want me gold now! Oh, God, no! The same magic that put the basement stairs where the kitchen used to be. Killing her immediately. Of course, that means the Leprechaun still has no idea where his gold is. Eh, no biggie. Still got Mr. O'Grady to interrogate. Tell me where you hid the gold. How did you find me? <laughs> the wee people have their magical ways. It's magic. I don't got to explain shit. But O'Grady isn't going to give up the gold that easily, for he has a four-leaf clover. Where did you get that? Likely from a clover patch. I, I know it feels like you'll never find one, but they do grow eventually. The clover does scare the leprechaun, more so than getting shot, anyway. He's got to land quite a few slugs in the little bastard just to slow him down. Your bullets won't stop me forever. I'll keep coming back. Okay, then. How does the leprechaun feel about wood chippers? Stunning the creature, O'Grady keeps him weak with the power of pure luck and seals him away inside a wooden crate, shortly before pouring gasoline over it in an attempt to burn the little bastard away. But oh darn it, he suffers a stroke at the last second, and that never happens! Oh well, just means we can suddenly fast forward ten years later to present day, 1993. Here we are introduced to Tori, a young lady from L.A., played by Jennifer Aniston, and her father, J.D., played by John Sanderford. I'm going to be miserable here. There's no swimming pool, there's no shopping malls, there's no cable. No, but there's freedom! As luck would have it, her old man bought the old O'Grady house, which looks like nobody bothered to clean or clear out at fucking all in the last decade. I'm surprised he even wiped up the blood. JD's like, yeah, it's a bit of a fixer-upper. And Tori's like, F this and up yours, I'm out of here. But that leads her to run right into the hunky painter her dad hired. Nathan, played by Ken Oland. She explains as quickly as she can that this place is far too disgusting to stay in. And he's like, psh, <laughs> little girl scared of spiders, really? Wait a minute, did I misplace my 1950s calendar here? Girls? Listen, bud. Hey, this is the 90s. Women are treated equal. Ah, don't worry. Give it 30 years and everyone's going to be explaining. Actually, you know, women never had rights in the first place. 
But in order to prove to Sexy McSex Face that she's a strong, independent woman who ain't afraid of no ghost, she tells her father that yes, they are staying. That way we can move on to introducing the other two important characters, Ozzy, played by Mark Holton, and Alex, played by Robert High Gorman. Alex is the brains of the operation, as Ozzy, uh, well, he's what Chris Rock would call special needs. Well, when you see a, a star in the night sky, the first star, you can make a wish. You know, come true. Stop with the magic stuff. Ooh, Alex, keep that up. I'm gonna start a change.org petition to make you stop. But as Tori attempts to sneakily schmooze up to the stud, a sheet scares the shit out of her! Oh, so much for tea. Smashed all over that weird crate. And who knows what O'Grady had in there. Weird guy. Collected weird stuff. Hey, let's see what he's got in this thing. Yeah. Well, that is, of course, uh, unless you're scared. <sighs> scared? Me? I don't know, old guys can collect some pretty freaky stuff up. He might have some literal skeletons in his closet, just saying. But before they can open up, they hear a scream! That's because Alex accidentally made Ozzy splatter paint all over himself. That way the others can tell him to go inside and clean up, leaving Ozzy all alone when he hears that strange little girl voice singing in the basement as he moves in to investigate. Yes. He brushes the four-leaf clover away, removing the leprechaun's kryptonite. Though after ten years, I'm surprised the thing hadn't decomposed yet. Freeing the Fae from his confines. What are you? What do I look like, me lad? Ah, some low-hanging fruit there. I just gotta name drop the most Irish YouTuber I can think of. Call me Kevin. Leprechaun's like, hey, I'm a leprechaun! But that's not my whole personality. I also make shoes, and I'd love to shine yours. But I could also make a boot out of your ear if you don't tell me where my gold is! So he must run! You only got away because big powers are weak! Sure. Listen, Leppy, a poor artist blames his tools. When Ozzy comes out screaming that there's a leprechaun in the basement, of course nobody fucking believes him. Nathan says he'll look if it'll make him feel better, but Ozzy is like, it's too dangerous. Don't worry, he's got a stick. I'll give him the advantage. So they all head down, but of course, no leprechaun. But Ozzy swears it's the truth. And he had the buckles on his shoes, and he had them real horrible teeth, and they were all rotten and everything, and... Excuse me, I'm doing what I can. Spent 10000 on them so far, and probably have like 30000 left to go. Everyone else is convinced it was probably just a rat. Or the wind. Or their minds playing tricks on them, as long as they can get back to work like good NPC guards. But looky here, a sudden magical rainbow appears. Thus, Ozzy rushes towards the end. Alex keeps up to keep him safe. And what is at the end of the rainbow? A beat-ass broken down truck. And what is inside this beat-ass broken down truck? A bag of gold! I told you! Uh-oh. That's what that leprechaun was talking about. Would you stop for that stupid leprechaun stuff? Geez, we just found the end of a rainbow and discovered a bag of gold coins at standard everyday activities. They do wonder if it's real gold, though. Don't worry, Ozzy has an idea. Just bite on him. I've seen it in a movie. Oh, oh my god. I swallowed that gold coin. Geez, this man eats his gold leaf in bulk. Alex decides that he should take over the gold management business, keep one to get appraised, and hide the rest. Ozzy thinks they should tell the others, but Alex is like, no, they can't find out. If they do, they'll just want to take all the money for themselves. Besides, we need the money to help pay for the, uh, the operation. To make you smart. See, we can go to the hospital and have them operate and fix your brain. So you see, Alex isn't a greedy bastard. He's just an imbecile who doesn't realize that medical technology doesn't exist even now, let alone back in 93. But he's not the only idiot on set, no. For when the creepy leprechaun begins fondling Tori... Nathan, come on, what are you doing? Oh my god! Does Nathan have a twin? So the little bastard scratches her! However, the guys think it might have been some stray vermin. Dad, that was not an animal. Okay, I know what it feels like when a man caresses my leg. You do? Yes, but only the leg. The, the thigh is a, a bit too far, and uh, the foot people get way too into it. 
Hearing meowing, JD is convinced the Creepo Stalker is just a cat hiding in this convenient hole. But as he jams his hand in there in pursuit of the presumably hurt, scared, cornered animal... Ah! What? Ah! What? Ah! What? Ah! what? I can't beat me! Oh my god. Pressure on him. He is nibbled apart! Yes, I, I know it looks bad and a lot worse than a minor cut, but by horror movie standards, he's fine. But not in this horror movie, no. They have to rush into the emergency room at once! Oh, oh no. Come on. Alex! Shoot the distributor, cat! But the truck won't start! Normally, I'd chalk that up to just being in this genre, but they actually take the time to establish a reason why this particular truck has difficulty starting, so that later, when that happens, it actually makes logical sense. I'm not used to that in this genre. Alex fixes it up and they're off, but they aren't the only ones with a vehicle as a leprechaun hops on his tricycle in pursuit. So they're all in town where Alex and Ozzy can slip away to Collectible Joe's where they meet up with Collectible Joe, played by John Voldstad. Gold coin in hand, they want to know its value. Joe's like, that depends, gold good, but its origins could make it worth even more. You reckon that, that coin might have come from a leprechaun? Never mind. Now come to think of it, what was O'Grady going to be getting for his haul? Just having a sack of gold coins isn't enough to buy you a jacuzzi. You're going to have to, like, turn that into dollars. Is he, is he going to be getting a leprechaun premium on those coins or what? Alex lets Collectible Joe hold on to the coin for now so he can give a full appraisal by tomorrow. However, after they leave, the camera remains watching Joe perform mundane tasks! Hey Joe, before you leave for the day, maybe like the video. And subscribe so you can check out my newest reviews every Wednesday. I know you can hear me. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll let you have your scene. We just do mundane tasks and nothing to the plot. That's because the leprechaun is here as well! I want me gold coin! Well, hold on now, we have still yet to determine whether or not this particular coin is of leprechaun origin. One bite to the leg clears that up real quick, and Joe rescinds the coin for his collection. But just because he gave the leprechaun exactly what he asked for, that's eh, no reason Little Monster can't pogo stick the man to death! Well, nothing to do now but shine the man's shoes and steal that handy dandy leprechaun sized car he happened to have in the store. In the meantime, how's old JD doing? My first day here, and my father ends up in the hospital. Well, it's just for observation. You know, I'll be fine in the morning. Observation? The man got nibbled on. All I'm observing is that he's straight up gone for the rest of the movie at the 40 minute mark. In the meantime, the leprechaun is terrorizing around the country roads, grabbing the attention of Deputy Trippett, played by David Permenter. Say, aren't we a little young to be out this late? No, I'm 600 years old. Oh, damn. Leprechaun medical care must be something else. Something that Trippet might want to sign up for as the leprechaun grabs his face and tosses his gun to the side. He flees into the woods with a gruesome green gorehound in hot pursuit. After a little game of spot the minuscule murderer, the leprechaun drops down onto Trivet and snaps his neck. Hey, what do you know? The movie actually is getting a little body count going. But what the leprechaun really wants is his gold. So he rushes back to the house and begins to ransack the place. Dad. <laughs> And seriously, you better get the body count popping soon, because honestly, I believe that cereal is more efficient at killing people than this. In any case, he can't seem to find his gold coin, but he can find all the shoes in the house and give them a proper shine, making for quite a sight to behold when everyone gets back. The entire place is torn apart! Spare that pile of well-organized, very nice-looking footwear. This is crazy. What the hell's going on here? Well, it could have been a bear. They sometimes come down from the hills looking for food. Oh yeah, sure, Yogi just came down, busted in the back door, stole a picnic basket, but before he left, left you everything you'd need in order to run like hell. Ozzy's like, hey, shoes, leprechaun, but nobody cares. Place is a mess and they gotta clean it up. But then Tori and Nathan hear a creepy bell. Ah! Look what I found. Great, Great. Ozzy. Ah, don't worry, Ozzy's just reminding everyone to ring that notification bell and be updated for every future upload. Ozzy, will you cut it out with that stupid bell? But like the subscribe button, the bell seems to only kind of work at random. 
But what could this rigging be? Nathan goes out to investigate and is captured! <laughs> Looks more like a rabbit trap to me, unless he's out here hunting Winnie the Pooh. So we're nearly an hour into this movie, but finally everyone has found out, hey, there's a friggin' leprechaun out here trying to kill us. Fortunately for them, he's small and relatively weak, so they can beat the crap out of the creature while Ozzy calls for the police. Blasting the bastard with buckshot, the villain vanishes. Now all they gotta do is wait for the help to arrive. You didn't tell them that it was a leprechaun, did you? Of course I did. That's what it was, wasn't it? Oh, jeez. Okay. But of course, Ozzy is known for his tall tales, so no one is going to believe him that a leprechaun is attacking this family. Man, this movie is spending an awful lot of time establishing facts about characters to explain plot points that most horror movies just kind of assume is the default position. But they can't call to confirm because the phone is suddenly dead! And no bother, can't be the only thing that's dead. I shot it, I put six rounds into that thing. He shot him six times! So there's nothing stopping them from taking Nathan to the truck and driving him down to the hospital. But oh darn it, the engine won't start! That's because of the expertly established issues this particular vehicle has with the distributor cap. But when Alex goes to fix it, he finds that they have an even bigger problem! Barely. The leprechaun is still alive! Fighting him off, the little bastard escapes into the barn. But then... <laughs> He hobbled together another vehicle! Yeah, I know this leprechaun is a shoemaker, as the legends tend to be, but I missed the part where he replaced Exhibit on Pimp My Ride. Proving again that size doesn't matter, the leprechaun's Tonka truck topples the pickup! But this gives them the opportunity to run like hell back into the house for safety! Thinking fast, Tori calls the police on her cell phone! For like, 16 seconds. Hello? Damn it. Okay, the battery died. Well, it's a Motorola Microtac, you should be used to that. Since they did contact the police, though, that means the police send out a unit to investigate. No one closer than Deputy Trippet over here. My ETA is less than three minutes. If I need backup, I'll call it in. Roger, Trippet. Oh, perhaps it would be a little more useful to send someone a bit more... alive. Boy, that leprechaun sure is mean. It is not a leprechaun, damn it! I gotta say, everyone is written very believably. Take Tori over here, no matter how much evidence is thrown in her face that it's quite obviously a real leprechaun, leprechauns aren't real, so she ain't believing it. Ozzy's like, well, what about the bag of gold then? But this is the first Tori's hearing about that. Seeing Alex shut Ozzy up, Tori drills the kid as to what the gold is, which Alex points out they were gonna save so they could get Ozzy that operation to fix his brain. Alex, you can't fix Ozzy's brain. I know that. But he doesn't. So you see, it's not that Alex is an imbecile who doesn't realize that that medical technology doesn't exist even now, let alone back in 93. He's just a greedy bastard! But if the leprechaun wants his gold, just give him his fucking gold! Alex hid it where no one would ever find it. In the well! You know, where no one would ever find it so long as all the time anyone lived in this house, they never drink, or bathe, or do laundry, or simply decide to dick with that big prop in the front yard. Is that my gold? What the hell are you? I'm a leprechaun, me dear. <laughs> Gee, she's gonna make it to the end of the movie like, whoo boy, that was insane. <laughs> anyway, leprechauns still don't exist. That was, that was probably just the wind or something. She gives him the gold, no questions asked, and runs like hell. She figures that's that. But there's the slight problem here that he's still short one coin. So he attacks once more, demanding they return his gold in full. So they do battle. Oh, oh. I'm right here. And I ain't no Santa Claus! Hmm. Pretty sure that's how most horror movies would end if they were set in Texas. But oh yeah, it's a special method to killing leprechauns, and sadly, 12-gauge buckshot ain't it. Besides, he's got more wheels to ride before the credits roll. And heck, we've got like 20 minutes of movie left. May as well throw in a little homage to A Nightmare on Elm Street while we're at it, as Tori tears the phone off the wall, but it rings anyway. Having problems? Do you need a hand? <laughs> Okay, now call her a bitch! But he wants the last gold coin. The last gold coin in Ozzy's stomach! So they figure they can't sacrifice him, they need to find a way to kill the leprechaun. Fortunately, Ozzy deduces that old Grady actually survived that stroke in the opening and is still alive, and they could therefore learn how to kill a leprechaun from him! Probably! So distracting the leprechaun with shoes, they hop into the jeep and head down to the rest home. 
Oh well, just means the leprechaun can use more wheels to pursue them. Okay, so which upcoming scene is more likely? The leprechaun chasing them on a motorcycle or using a wheeled office chair? Double parking in the handicapped spot, Tori sneaks in looking for O'Grady, finding his room. She asks how they can stop it. There's only one way to kill a leprechaun, but I'm not going to tell you. I'll never tell you. So as we have seen as leprechaun's powers return, he can just do whatever the fuck he wants in this movie. So the wheelchair is the new wheels for this chase. As it just so happens, though, the elevator Tori escaped into is where she finds O'Grady. Dying horribly, but not so fast that he can't tell her how to defeat the little bastard. A four-leaf clover. Freshly plucked from the clover patch. Damn. Does it still work if you just pull one of the leaves into two and fake it? Touch him with a clover, then he's vulnerable. Okay, O'Grady can die and they can head back, and the leprechaun can pursue. Digging through the patch, she does eventually find one, but the leprechaun is attacking Alex! No worries, Ozzy can distract him by pointing out he's got the last coin inside him, and Alex can snatch the clover from Tori on the way by, leading to the leprechaun killing one liner. Fuck you, lucky charms. <laughs> the four-leaf clover into his mouth, killing him! Even though it's just supposed to make him vulnerable, not kill him outright. Oh, it's not like this movie doesn't have a ton of sequels. Therefore, happy ending! The leprechaun dies horribly, falling into the well. Ozzy lived, Alex lived, Nathan lived, Tori lived, and the leprechaun lived. That's nothing they can't fix with an explosion! Until the leprechaun curses the well, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah happy ending for now! And JD is... Probably fine. He didn't come back for the ending. The, the ending body count is like four all minor characters. Anyway, that was Leprechaun. I'm actually kind of surprised that it spawned so many movies when the original is kind of basic. It's not a bad movie, of course, but I'm used to watching horror movie series of eight or ten sequels that are varying degrees of blah, but they are forgiven because the original is a classic. I really don't get that feeling from Leprechaun. The original is your standard horror movie, but with a leprechaun, and a strange sense of direction. It's got an R rating, but if it weren't for the blood and language, I feel like this could have easily been a PG movie. Not even PG-13 horror here, it's very tame for most of the running time, and leans more into horror comedy. Still, you do get some gory scenes that allegedly were put in specifically to satisfy horror freaks like me, which makes for some sharp tonal shifts throughout the film. The highlight of the movie has to be Warwick's performance as the Leprechaun. Going all out with the role, there is no such thing as subtlety with a garishly dressed magical murder miniman. This works both for the comedic aspects and for expressing the Leprechaun as a deranged prankster in the more horrifying parts of the movie. Everyone else, well, they play their roles well enough and some have more memorable lines, but the fact that only side characters seem to be getting offed really made the whole situation not feel quite so threatening for the main players. At the end of the day, Leprechaun is an entertaining enough flick for what it is, but somehow doesn't feel like it does anything special with the concept of a Leprechaun horror movie. Coming in at three Leprechaun-sized vehicles out of five. Though I guess I shouldn't be too surprised if it came up a little short. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, Leprechaun spawned a whole goddamn series out of a relatively modest movie. It's like seven more as of this writing. And I think that's about perfect for the We're like, really scared. And before you close this out, did you like and subscribe yet? Check the bell, see if it's working, I don't know. And you like Summer Special reviewing a bunch of horror movies in a row? Well, you're in luck. This is the 11th one I've done. I've done plenty more. There's Halloween, Hellraiser, Saw, The Summer of Freddy vs. Jason. That's every Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street movie in one big special. There's a lot to choose from.